time to wait for it. The only show on television where being quick to answer doesn't make you a winner. Here on the Intergalactic Time Capsule, the longer you wait, the more points you'll get. We'll be testing the nerves of our contestants and seeing if they've got the skills to avoid our tank of goo. Each of our questions is 15 seconds long and we've got an infinite number of clues stored in the Total Intelligence Mechanism, or as I like to call him, Tim. There is nothing this computer doesn't know. That's not completely true, Pete. Really? Yes. I can't quite figure out why you chose to style your hair in that manner. Very funny, Tim. Very, very funny. For those who fail to clock up points, their fate is to take a dunk in our goo portal. With four rounds and some fantastic prizes up for grabs, let's see who's playing today. Today's team are from Stevenage, and our first contestant is Shannon. Hello, Shannon. Hello, Pete. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you happy to be with us here on the Intergalactic Time Capsule? It's amazing. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very spacious. Spacious <laughs> because we're in space. <laughs> okay. You're a sporty person, Shannon. Yeah, I like playing netball. Right. I play it as a position as goal shooter. Okay. So I shoot a lot of goals. So you're right, right by the net. Yeah. So you get past the ball and you. He's contestant number two. Hello, Regan. Hello, Pete. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. You're a sporty fella. Yeah, I do four sports outside school and then I do three in school. Wow, how do you have time for anything else? I don't. My, <laughs> like, my week's full. I only get um, a day that's free. Oh, wow. Well, very best of luck, Regan. Lovely to meet you. Our third contestant is Harry. Hello, Harry. Uh, hello. How's it going? OK. Good, good. What do you think about our goo portal down there? Is it central heated? <laughs> well, I, no, I can't guarantee that it's going to be warm, Harry. I really can't. It might uh... be a little bit cold down there. So, Harry, you're into trampolining? Yes. How often do you get to do that? Once a week. OK. And you bounce fairly high? I don't know exactly, but I say a few metres. Oh, a few metres? Well, the half the trampoline helps. Yeah, of course. All right, well, you try your best, and the best of luck to you. All right, Harry, nice to meet you. Our fourth contestant is Megan. Hello, Megan. Hi, Pete. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good, I'm very well, I'm very well. Megan, you're a bit of a cook. Yes. And I've heard you quite like to invent your own recipes and come up with new, exciting dishes. What sort of stuff have you come up with? Well, pasta um, with bacon and tomato sauce. Sounds tasty. Wow. Who is your biggest competition, Megan, on the, on the game today? Um, Shannon. Shannon. She's very, very clever. Okay. Um, she always beats me to a question. Oh, really? In class? Mm-hmm. Well, you know the name of the game's wait for it. It's all about being patient and not coming in too soon. Do you think she'll be good at that? No. <laughs> all right, well, it's time to find out. Let's get cracking. This is round number one. It's called Wait For It. Now, each question is 15 seconds long. The question starts at the same time the clock begins, counting from zero to 15 seconds. You can buzz in at any time, but the longer you wait, the more points you'll get. So, for example, if you buzz in at seven seconds, you get the question right, you get yourself seven points. If you get it wrong, everyone else gets seven points. Now, there are ten questions in this round, and you each have three lives. It's really important that you use those lives wisely. Remember, you have to listen carefully to the clues, and when you think you know the answer, wait for it. First question. Let's have it, Tim, please. We were a girl group. Two of our members were previously in the S Club Juniors. We released a version of Just Can't Get Enough in aid of comic relief in 2009. We've supported Girls Aloud and the Jonas Brothers on tour. We are named after a day of... Regan. Girls Aloud. Girls Aloud is the wrong answer. The answer we were looking for was the Saturdays. That means that everyone else gets 14 points. This is question number two. Let's have it, please, Tim. I'm a venomous creature, normally found in warm climates. 
My poison is rarely fatal to human beings. There's a star sign named after me. I'm known for having a sting in my tail. I'm also the name of the island in a CBBC adventure game. Ooh, out of time there. The clock ran out at 15 seconds. Nobody knew the answer. Was it Scorpion? Scorpion was the correct answer, but you just, just didn't get in on it. your buzzer I in time. I just it. Oh, so frustrating. Not to worry, though. It's only question two. Let's have question three, Tim, please. I'm a very scary man who wears a black cape, black mask, speaks with a deep, raspy voice, and appears in sci-fi movies. I belong to the dark side and serve the Emperor, leading his Imperial Stormtroopers against the Rebel Alliance. Oh, Megan, just in at 15 seconds. What's the answer? Is it Darth Vader? Darth Vader is the right answer. Well played. <laughs> Megan's got 15 <laughs> points. A very good start. OK, here's question four, please, Tim. I'm something you'll find on the dinner table. I'm usually made of metal, but may also be made of wood or plastic. Without me, eating your soup would be a lot messier. I'm also used when eating cornflakes or stirring a drink. I come in a number of sizes. Tea, dessert. Ooh, Regan in first. Spoon. Spoon is the right answer. Well played. <laughs> Regan's got 14 points. Here comes question number five. I'm a politician. After an election, the Queen asked me to form a government. I'm usually the leader of the largest party in Parliament. I run the country. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown have been examples of me. I'm a two-word job title. Ooh. Ooh, just in at 15 seconds, Megan. What's the answer? Um, is it the President of the um, United States? It's the wrong uh. answer. The answer we need is the Prime Minister. Never mind. That means everybody else gets 15 points. OK. Question six. Let's have it, Tim, please. I'm something you can do that's environmentally friendly. I can be done with paper, metal, glass and some kinds of plastic. You can see my symbol on the side of special bins. People who do this are often described as Greek. Harry. Recycling. Recycling is the right answer. Well played, Harry. Yes. He's got 13 points. OK. Question seven, please, Tim. I am an activity that is a combination of gymnastics and dance performed mostly by girls. I'm usually seen alongside other sports. In American sports, I'm used to encourage fans to support their teams. Pom-poms are often used in this activity. Harry. Cheerleading. Cheerleading is the right answer. Well done. <laughs> 14 points for Harry. OK, question eight. Let's have it, Tim, please. I'm a famous London landmark. Although my name is generally used to describe the big clock on my tower, it actually refers to the large bell inside the tower. I'm next to the Houses of Parliament. I chime every hour, and I'm a very important... Harry, just beat Shannon to it there. What's the answer? Big Ben. Big Ben is correct. Well done. <laughs> 14 points. All right. Harry? That was your last life, OK? You've used up all three of them, so you're frozen out for the rest of the round. You can't answer anymore. We're up to question number nine. Listen closely. Let's have it, Tim, please. I'm a word with more than one meaning, beginning with the letter H. I'm the top part of the body, where you find your hair and face, and where you'd wear a hat. I'm also used to describe the most important teacher in a school, and you might be sent to see... Megan. Head. Head. It's the right answer. Well done. <laughs> Megan gets 14 points. Megan, that was the last of your lives, so you're frozen out for this final question. This is question 10. Let's have it, Tim, please. I'm a very famous author. Most of my books have been turned into films. My most recent book is called The Tales of Beedle the Bard, but I'm most famous for creating a series of books about a boy wizard called Harry Potter and his magical school Hogwarts. Just out of time there. I think Shannon knew the answer, didn't you? J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling was the right answer. Unfortunately, you didn't buzz in in time. Nobody gets any points. And that brings us to the end of round number one. Who waited the longest and who picked up the most points? It's time to find out. Players, if you could leave your play pods and please enter the drop zone. OK. Tim's been keeping the scores. I can reveal that the first person safe 
and definitely through to round number two is... Harry! Well done, Harry. OK. The second person safe through to round number two, along with Harry, is... Megan! Well done, Megan. You're safe. The person leaving us and about to take a dunk in the gunk is... Shannon! Sorry, Shannon, but we've got to say goodbye. Say bye to her, guys! Hey, there she goes! All right, Shannon! See you soon! <laughs> Regan, a close call out there. Yeah, I was, like, um, nervous cos it was either me or Shannon going in. Yeah. So when Shannon fell in, um, fell in, I felt quite glad. Yeah? Yeah. Super. All right. Well, this is round number two. It's called Watch and Wait. It's different from round number one, but we use the same scoring system. I'm going to give you a category, and you have to decide how many seconds worth of clue you think you'll need on that subject. If you stop the clock at eight seconds, you'll hear eight seconds of clue. If you get it right, you'll bag yourself eight points. If you get it wrong, we'll restart the clue and give your opponents a chance to swipe those points. There are six questions in this round, and once again, you each have three lives. OK? Well, let's wait for it. Our first category is people. Remember, we'll hear the clock first. Let's start it, Tim, please. Keep an eye on one another, as well as the clock. Need to come in before 15 seconds. And uh, Regan comes in at 11. Regan, you're going to hear 11 seconds of clue, and then I'll ask you for your answer. So, Tim, let's play the clues, please. I'm a female family member. I'm also a word used to describe some nuns and nurses. In a family, there could be one of me or lots. Mary, Kate and Ashley Olsen have a younger one called Lizzie. What's the answer, Regan? Is it a nurse? No. Nurse is the wrong answer. Never mind. What we're going to do is restart the clues. Megan, Harry, this is a chance for you to swipe some points, but you must buzz in if you want to answer the question. All right, Tim, let's start the clues. Kylie and Danny Minogue are this to each other. We have the same parents, but I'm not your brother. Ooh, just out of time. The answer we were looking for was sister. Sister, not to worry. Our second category is objects. So let's have it, Tim. Remember to watch one another and wait for maximum points. <coughs> Megan, in at 14 seconds, you're going to hear 14 seconds of clue. Here it comes. You might receive me from your mum and dad every week, sometimes in return for doing chores. You can spend me on sweets or save me up to buy toys or games. If you're naughty, sometimes your parents might put... Is Megan it... looks like she knows the answer. What is it, Megan? Is it pocket money? Pocket money is correct. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> Good waiting. Megan's got herself 14 points. Good stuff. OK. Our third category is the big wide world. Start the clock, Tim. Remember not to wait too long. <coughs> Harry, in at 14 seconds. You're going to hear the clues now, Harry. Here they come. I'm one of the most famous sights to see on a visit to America. I'm found in the harbour of New York City. I'm an enormous statue of a woman holding a flaming torch in my right hand. My full title is Liberty... Harry, what's the answer? The Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. It's correct. Well played. Yeah. yeah. Harry's pleased. He should be. He's got 14 points. 
We're going into question number four now, and the category is sport. So, Tim, start the clock. Watch each other and the clock. <coughs> Regan, in at 12 seconds. Regan, here come your clues. I'm a series in cricket. I take place every second year. I am play between England and Australia, and my matches can last for several days. I was supposedly named after a burnt piece of wicket. Regan, what's your answer? Bowler. Bowler. Is the wrong answer. All right, let's start the clues again, Tim. In an 1882 game, my trophy is a little red urn. No one? The answer we were looking for was the ashes. Our fifth category is places. Tim, start the clock. Remember, the aim is to pick up the most points in this round. <coughs> Megan, just in at 14 seconds. Let's hear the clues. I'm a very large country in Asia. I'm home to the River Ganges and the Taj Mahal. I have one of the highest populations in the world. I'm famous for my spicy food. Restaurants specialising in food from here serve poppadoms, naan bread, pilau rice and curry. Megan looks confident. What's the answer? Is it India? India? It's correct. Well played. <laughs> 14 points to Megan. OK, this is the last question in this round. The category's history. Tim, start the clock. <coughs> oh, Harry just beat Regan to it. Harry, here are your clues on history. I'm the patron saint of many countries, including England. My flag is a red cross on a white background. In the most famous story about me, I was said to have slayed a dragon. My feast day is the 23rd of April. My initials are F. Harry, you look confident. What's the answer? St George. It's the correct answer. <laughs> well done, Harry. He's got himself 14 points. So that brings us to the end of round number two. Who waited the longest and picked up the most points? Who do we have to say goodbye to? It's time to find out. Players, leave your play pods and enter the drop zone. OK, Tim's been keeping score. The person definitely safe through to round number three is... Harry! Well played, Harry. That means we have to say goodbye to someone. The person leaving us, about to enter the goo portal, is... Regan! Sorry, we're going to say goodbye to you, Regan. All the best. Bye! There he goes! Oh! Well played, Regan. <laughs> Well, Megan, well played. Through to round number three. How do you feel? It was just like a pleasure to um, get this far. Yeah. Because I never thought I would get this far. Well, you've done really, really well. You should be confident. Good waiting. We're happy to have you in round number three. This one's called Wait and See. I'm going to give you a question category, and you have to decide when they're going to come in with the answer. Now, you've got three time slot options. One to five seconds. Six to ten seconds and 11 to 15 seconds. Now, of course, your opponent won't be able to see your prediction, and the points don't match the seconds this time. It's the best of five. So, if they come in with the correct answer within your time slot, you get a point. If they answer correctly outside of your time slot, they get the point. So you know the rules. You've seen the possible time slots. It's now time to wait and see who can make the right prediction. Now, Harry, because you waited the longest over rounds one and two, 
You get to decide whether you want to predict first or answer first. What would you like to do? Hmm. Predict. Predict. OK. Uh, the category is the big wide world. I'm just going to have a little chat with Megan. The big wide world, Megan. Have you travelled around a lot? I went to Portugal when I was a baby. Right. But, well, I've only been somewhere I can remember. OK. Um, which is to Paris. Yeah, did you go up the... Eiffel Tower, yeah, yeah, right oh. to the top. All right, she's done a bit of travelling, Harry. Are you ready to make a prediction? Yes. OK, press the button whenever you're ready. OK, Harry, you press it. There it is. All right, we can all see that. Of course, Megan can't. Megan, remember, you can buzz in at any time. Here come your clues on the big, wide world. I'm a country in southern Europe, popular with holidaymakers. The Canary Islands and the Balearic Islands are both part of me. I'm home to many popular tourist destinations, such as the Costa Blanca and the Costa del Sol. My capital city is Madrid, and my inhabitants speak Spanish. Just out of time there, Megan. The answer we were looking for was Spain. Because we're out of time, nobody gets the points. Our second category is colours. Megan, it's your turn to predict in a minute. I'm just going to have a little chat with Harry. Harry? <coughs> yeah? Colours. Are you good with your colours? Are you good in art class? Well, I'm not good at painting and drawing, so if I'm good with colours, yeah. OK, all right. Megan, are you re ready to make a prediction? Yeah. OK. Megan, make the prediction when you're ready. Here come your clues. I'm a colour. There are many different shades of me, such as olive, jade and emerald. If you mix blue and yellow, you get this colour. I'm the colour people are said to go if they're seasick. When found on a traffic light, I'm the colour that indicates go. And I'm the colour of most people. Oh, in at 14 seconds, Harry. What's your answer? Green. Green is correct. Let's look at the prediction. Oh, Megan thought you'd come in between six and ten seconds. You were in at 14 with the right answer. You get the point. <laughs> He's happy with that. Megan, not to worry. This is our third question. The category is television. And, Harry, it's your turn to predict. Do you watch a lot of TV, Megan? No. No? You must watch CBBC, though. Yeah. Yeah, of course you do, of course you do. All right, Harry, make your prediction whenever you're ready. Here come your clues. I'm a cartoon dog. I'm an Abyssinian wire-haired tripound. My owner is a boy called Dennis. I was first seen in the Beano, and I've since appeared on TV cartoons. My owner, Dennis, also has a pig called Rasher and a spider called Dasher. My name rhymes with both of them. Oh, just out of time there, Megan. The answer we were looking for was Nasher. OK, because the time ran out, nobody gets the point on that question. Our fourth category is numbers. Megan, it's your turn to predict. Harry, are you good at maths? Yes. Yeah. Is it a strong subject for you? All right, Megan, is he bluffing? It's up to you to decide. Whenever you're ready, press the button, please. All right. Let's start the clues, please, Tim. I'm a prime number between 1 and 10. A duet contains this many people, and a biped has this many legs. I'm the number of faces on a coin. I can be known as a pair or a couple. When you divide a number by me, you halve it. When you multiply a number by me... Harry, in at 14 seconds, what's the answer? Two. Two is correct. Let's see the prediction. Oh, Megan thought you'd come in between six and ten. You're in at 14. Harry gets the point. <laughs> OK. We have one question left, but that is the end of the round. Harry has two points. Unfortunately, Megan, you've got no points. Harry, that means you're through to the final, but Megan, we have to say goodbye to you. You've been a total superstar, a really, really great contestant. It was lovely to meet you. Megan, if you could leave your play pod and please enter the drop zone. Say bye. <laughs> to have got to the final of Wait For It. Uh, pretty good. You've been really, really good. But this is your final challenge, Harry, all right? 
you're going to hear a series of clues. They're 10 seconds long. You've got 60 seconds to give me six correct answers and make your way across the goo portal. Look, got to go from one of these to the next. Like this. Steady. You can only move forward when you get a question right. If you get it wrong or you pass, you have to stay where you are until you get the next one correct. OK, Harry, very best of luck. Tim, let's begin. I am the word that refers to a male relative. You can also put the words half and step in front of me. Prince William is this relation to Prince Harry. I am the male Dad! equivalent of... That's the wrong I'm answer. I'm a type of fish. I have a distinctive colour which gives me my name. It's said that I have a very short memory. You might win me as a prize at a fun fair and keep me as a pet in a bowl of... That's right, move forward. I'm a male sheep. I usually have a thick woolen coat and a grumpy stare. I may have horns, but I'm not a bull. You may see me on farms. The female I partner is called a you. Uh... Oh, one more time. I'm Next a question. part of your body. You only have one of me. Other creatures have me too. I'm on the upper part of your body and sit between your shoulders and your head. Giraffes and swans have long ones. That's right. I'm Move normally forward. small. I only have one eye and I'm usually made of metal. I'm quite like a pin, but I'm used differently. You would slot cotton through me if you wanted to sew something. I begin with N. Time. I'm one. a special type of construction. I'm often a long way from shore. I'm made of metal. I'm used as a platform to let people drill for fuel under the ground or under the seabed. Oh, out of time. Audience, help me out. Three, two, one. See you, Harry. There he goes. Oh. Harry, you're not going home empty handed. You get to take away one of our intergalactic space bouncers. Give it up for Harry. What another great show. Join us next time on Wait For It. Wait For It is just the best game show you can ever be on. I'm glad that Harry got to the finals. Being on wait for it was brilliant. Wait for it! Get ready to hide behind a cushion for some ghost hunting mayhem at Hotel Trouble. Jeff, I'm scared, but I can't wait. When the pressure's on and the clock is ticking, you know you're in the zone. <laughs> CBBC's number one game shows are in the game show zone. Weekdays at 5 past 4, CBBC on BBC One. <laughs> Let the games begin. <laughs> Welcome to Hotel Trouble. 